I'd like you to address uh, the role of Muslims in Europe, because uh, just to quote something, which I may be misreading, but something you wrote not so long ago, Europe's half-century-long holiday from reality is over, you said. Europe has unsustainable demographic issues which, if unaddressed, will eradicate the continent as we know it in three or four generations. Yeah. Were you there partly pointing to uh, the, the demographics which suggest the Muslim population of Europe is on the rise? Yes, absolutely. And you you guess... see that as a fundamental danger to everything Europe stands for? I think it's a danger when it happens too fast, which is happening, I think, at the moment, and a lot of people are agree with this. Um, I think of a country I spend a lot of time in, like Holland, for instance, where there are, there are government statistics that suggest within just over a decade the majority of people in Holland will be, as it were, non-Dutch. Now, you can say that there's something, uh, there's something funny well, about pointing this out. Well, they won't be non-Dutch, will they? Because Hang on. They, they will be Dutch citizens, and they sure. will be the children of Dutch citizens, okay. and they will be as Dutch as, as any other oh, Dutchman. You, you want a bed? Uh, just go to Amsterdam or go to one of these cities and say, do you think that when you go into the mosque and you talk about issues which matter a lot to me, like gay rights, like women's rights and all these things, do you think you will get as much of a hearing there or do you think you will find it harder to? My suggestion, on the, well, the reason why I cite Holland is because, I, in my opinion, very hard fought for rights, very hard fought for liberal rights, like equalities, like basic equalities like gay rights, are under threat are undoubtedly under threat when you have too fast um, a population rising in that country that has not had time and will not, under the current demographic figures, have time to adapt to the Dutch way of life. Will Holland look more Dutch in the way we know it in 20 years' time or will it look more Islamified? I think I know the answer. Douglas Murray raises critical concerns about the impact of mass immigration on Western countries, particularly focusing on Holland. He points out that the rapid influx of immigrants, coupled with low levels of integration, poses a significant threat to the cultural and social fabric of these nations. Murray's worry is that in 20 years, countries like Holland might lose their unique cultural identities and become increasingly Islamic due to the demographic changes and lack of assimilation. One of the primary concerns Murray highlights is the potential erosion of basic rights that the West holds dear, such as women's rights and gay rights. These rights are foundational to Western societies, but are often at odds with the more conservative interpretations of Islam that some immigrant communities might bring with them. For instance, there have been numerous reports and studies highlighting issues within immigrant communities, such as higher rates of gender inequality and less acceptance of gay people. Consider some statistics and insights. A study by the Dutch government in 2018 found that only about 32% of Turkish and Moroccan immigrants in the Netherlands identified as very integrated. This lack of integration can lead to parallel societies where different norms and values prevail, undermining the cohesion of the broader society. Moreover, a 2016 survey by the European Union Agency for Fundamental Rights, FERA, revealed that only 24% of Muslims in the EU believed that homosexuality should be accepted by society, compared to a much higher acceptance rate among the general population. Additionally, Reports from various European countries have documented instances where immigrant communities have resisted integration into the broader societal norms. For example, in some areas with high concentrations of Muslim immigrants, there have been efforts to establish Sharia courts, which operate parallel to the national legal systems and often contradict Western values, especially regarding women's rights and freedoms. In a nutshell, you're saying Europe has too many Muslims. Um, well, <laughs> It, I think at the moment that Muslims are, are not integrating fast enough into Europe. Europe I don't has think too many Muslims. I don't think that well, they are, you, well, look, Feel free to say it. Wouldn't it. Matter, look, it wouldn't matter if there were too many Muslims here, if they integrated. But very many of the figures we see show that they are not. In Britain, polls have showed, there was one um, just last year from Policy Exchange, that showed that 40% of Muslims in Britain, for instance, wanted some elements of Sharia to be incorporated into British law. I think you find yourself in a very difficult and, position. And, where, if I may finish. You find yourself in a very difficult position when a sway of what? Whatever religion or whatever race, and after all this is actually about ideology, we are talking about an ideology in Islam, when people, uh, when a, a substantial enough percentage of your population honestly believe that they should be ruled by a different rule of law from other people, that is a problem. It is going to be a bigger problem, it is going to be a growing. Murray clarified that his concern is not about the sheer number of Muslims, but about the integration or lack thereof of those who immigrate to Europe. He emphasized that the issue is the persistence of ideologies from Islamist governments among some Muslim immigrants, which can be incompatible with Western values of democracy, freedom, and human rights. 
Murray pointed to recent polls indicating that a significant number of Muslims in Europe support the implementation of Sharia law in their countries of residence. For instance, a 2016 survey conducted by ICM for Channel 4 in the UK revealed that over half of British Muslims believe that homosexuality should be illegal and a substantial minority want to see Sharia law replace British law in areas with large Muslim populations. These figures highlight the ideological divide and the challenge of integrating values that are fundamentally at odds with those of liberal, secular societies. Douglas Murray's argument is clear. It's about ideology, not race or ethnicity. He stresses that Western societies must ensure that immigrants adopt the core values that define their new homes, rather than importing and perpetuating the restrictive and often oppressive ideologies from their countries of origin. This focus on ideology over ethnicity is crucial for maintaining social cohesion and protecting the freedoms that Western nations cherish. Former British Prime Minister David Cameron has spoken about the dangers of passive tolerance and the need for a more muscular approach to integration. He argued that allowing parallel communities to develop with values that contradict those of the host nation can lead to social fragmentation and tension. Similarly, French President Emmanuel Macron has warned about the risks of Islamist separatism and has introduced policies aimed at promoting integration and ensuring that all citizens adhere to the secular values of the Republic. Moreover, the work of the Quilliam Foundation, a UK-based think tank founded by former Islamists, highlights the importance of countering extremist ideologies and promoting integration. The Foundation advocates for a proactive approach to integration, emphasizing the need for education and engagement to help Muslim communities embrace democratic values and reject extremist interpretations of their faith. It's not about the number of Muslims, but about ensuring that those who come to Europe adopt the values of their new societies rather than maintaining and spreading ideologies that conflict with them. Addressing this issue is essential for preserving the freedoms and democratic principles that define Western nations and for fostering a cohesive and harmonious society.